Hello and welcome to Design Education Talks, the collaboration between the team here of the New Art School and Design Deducts Podcast. Our guest today is Haluk Meski. Welcome, Haluk. Hello, Liv Therese. How are you? Happy here. Thank you. So tell us about your new work. Um, as you can see from my hair, probably, it's been um, some um, 31 active years of copywriting. And of course, when you start off as a copywriter, you end up with uh, being a creative director. And at one point, you just establish your agency, et cetera, et cetera. I went through all that. And um, I did start in uh, 73 in what was, in fact, the Turkish office of uh, J. Walter Thompson, which was the, the school of advertising at that time. And uh, eventually I ended up uh, working in some very significant agencies, some of mine, and then I sold the agencies uh, in succession to Americans, the, the French, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so ended up being an old man. And uh, somewhere along the line, I started teaching uh, on invitation of one of my teachers uh, from high school times who uh, was one of the uh, presidents of an open university, a worldwide thing again in Turkey. And um, so I did some 35 years of teaching, copywriting, advertising, brand management, um, uh, so on and so forth, the design thinking, uh, marketing communications in major universities in Turkey. And um, I um, created during my advertising period, some 16 still remembered uh, historical advertising slogans and campaigns, which is considered to be Turkish advertising history. Again, you can judge from my hair. Um, and uh, in the meantime, I didn't stay put and I didn't just work on teaching and advertising. I translated advertising, brand, uh, creativity, marketing, communications books into Turkish language, uh, some 14 books. And recently I finished another one, uh, the other way around from Turkish to English, which is again in uh, advertising. Two of these are uh, novels still uh, about advertising, etc. I was um, really active in the Czechish Association of Advertising Agencies. I was uh, instrumental in founding of the Czechish Foundation of Advertising. I was president of the Advertising Agencies Association at the time. And currently I'm an honorary member of the association. Um, that's about it, I guess. My my history in the profession. Yes, yes, but also tell us about your unique uh, creation of your teaching methodology. Yeah. Um, while teaching advertising, of course, um, the one big wisdom that turns out is the fact that uh, you can teach the students to a point based on theory only. Uh, beyond that, they need to exercise, apply, execute, learn from uh, doing what they've learned on, in the books, just like any other profession, actually. If you are training doctors, they just have to get them at one point to work in hospitals on real uh, patients supervised by uh, doctors, veteran teachers, etc., etc. 
And this turned out to be the case and always was the case for advertising as well. And um, what we taught them in classrooms was mainly theory. Okay, so I was a little bit privileged because when you teach copywriting, uh, getting them to do some application work is inevitable. So they always try their hand on writing headlines, slogans, um, campaigns, et cetera, et cetera. Coming from the industry, I wasn't a typical academician, although I uh, followed the uh, academic setup uh, by the schools, I was always on the practitioner side. So eventually, um, uh, chair of um, trustees in a major university in Istanbul, a friend of mine called me one day and he said, uh, well, we started a student run ad advertising agency, but it um, didn't work out. Can you take this over and do something about that? And uh, I looked at the model and it was based on the typical student run advertising agency. Uh, the, the kids were supposed to go out in the neighborhood, uh, get some small time pop and mom stores to advertise so they could, you know, convert them to clients and they could do some advertising for them. And in the meantime, uh, they were supposed to learn application. Of course, it didn't work for many things. So I sat down and designed um, a model which involved uh, the school allocating a dedicated studio, so to speak, decorated as an advertising agency, maybe not as uh, chic as the real-time agency, but totally different than a classroom. And uh, I got two advertising veterans, one creative and one client service to head uh, the agency. And the kids, uh, thanks to that school, uh, attended this uh, agency, so to speak, uh, four days a week. They had nothing else to do. They were fourth year students. They spent their daytime work uh, at this agency and we got them fictitious clients, fictitious but realistic clients, which uh, involved products or services that were totally realistic but was never to be on the market. So we got friends, uh, experienced marketers to come in and play the role of uh, a client. And they gave briefs uh, to the students. The students were divided into brand groups. And then um, they came up with the strategy, the creative work, et cetera, et cetera. Everything went through uh, as it was in an advertising agency. So. They, they learned a lot. They didn't earn a salary. There was no budget constraints so that they could really think without being stopped by the client on account of uh, budgetary uh, restrictions, so on and so forth. And at the, the year end, we exhibited the work in a bar in Istanbul uh, where advertising people went so they were invited, they came over, we gave them drinks and they went around, they looked at the work, they talked to the kids, some of them got uh, recruited and so on and so forth. That was the model. So this went on for five uh, terms in that uh, Istanbul University, Istanbul Bilgi University to be exact. At the end of the fifth term, uh, there were a, a few shuffling because the school got sold to, uh, to an international network. And uh, the model came to a stop because they just wanted to uh, uh, limit the procedure, the space and so on and so forth. And there was no way that it would work. So we stopped. Years later, uh, when I was, uh, when I stopped working full time and then went to Izmir to, to live, I started teaching in Izmir uh, University of Economics Again, advertising, copywriting, and so on and so forth. And then the subject came up. 
uh, it took some planning and some time, but uh, school said, okay, let's do it. And they gave us, uh, you were part of it, uh, one uh, part of it. Uh, they gave us a uh, small modest quarters to start with, but eventually got to a big, really agency-like uh, place right now. And this year, this academic year, it's going to be enjoying seventh year. Unbelievable. The good thing about this uh, model is this. Uh, worldwide, there are three well-known researched surveyed uh, student-run advertising agencies. And judging from the articles uh, put out, the publications put out after the surveys and research on these uh, three models, uh, a lot of problems or weaknesses uh, just uh, come out. My model, which turns out to be a fourth one, uh, takes care of all those problems there is continuity, there is sustainability. Uh, clients do not pay anything because uh, as a principle, this agency does not do money, uh, work for money. It just does uh, some pro bono work for uh, NGOs or uh, arts and cultures, uh, institutions, so on and so forth, provided that they are not currently working with an agency because you don't want this model agency to compete with real-time agencies because we just, we don't want their businesses. We want them to employ our uh, students. The other thing this model uh, takes care of is a problem of uh, internship, staging. Uh, to give you a little bit of uh, statistics from Turkey, there are something like uh, 200 to 300, there used to be at least before the COVID thing, uh, 200 to 300 so-called advertising agencies, some of them big, some of them small. Uh, these are expected to uh, give internship possibilities to some 3,000 to 4,000 graduates each year from uh, media studies, PR and advertising faculties, so on and so forth. So what turned out was a big problem. This, the graduates started doing the unbelievable to just get their foot in the door. And unfortunately, the agencies took advantage of this. They started getting young minds working in their agencies for up to two years without pay or just for food money or just transportation, so on and so forth. Um, our agency gives the fourth year students of uh, graphic design discipline, uh, PR students and advertising students, the chance to work at uh, a recognized agency, or at least an agency structured as a recognized agency for a year. So by the time they graduate, they have uh, a year of experience with a portfolio to show, briefs, uh, executional work, and so on and so forth. So they, they have at least a handle on the internship program. I'm really uh, proud of this. And the model was, uh, in fact, shared with the teaching community in Athens uh, in uh, 2017 by uh, Professor Sema Mischi, you know her. And um, actually, it's, it's public now. Uh, any school uh, can actually uh, use it, consult with us uh, for uh, you know, uh, critical things, uh, best practices, uh, do's and don'ts, and so on and so forth. So there we are. That's fantastic. That's, that's really fantastic. So tell us how uh, this model uh, has changed in recent times. Is there any sort of difference to, to the online? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, I should have come to that, but uh, you beat me. 
Um, obviously, the model uh, involves uh, the students and the supervisors to work in an environment of the agency. Everything from turning up timely to uh, holding meetings, making presentations, and so on and so forth is part of the experience. But when the lockdown started, this was taken away, but technology just stepped in to uh, at least compensate for the problem of not being able to work under the same roof. So this last year, this past year, the agency worked just the same. The meetings, uh, discussions, uh, creative uh, uh, brainstorming, we hate the word, but uh, just to be uh, explanatory, were all done on Zooms and the platform the school uh, provides and so on and so forth. The presentations were also made uh, the same way. And um, it was so good that we went on to create an online creativity festival, which lasted for two days. We interviewed industry heavies, past graduates, uh, clients, uh, so on and so forth. And uh, it's all on YouTube now. And uh, we got a lot of uh, applause and, you know, back patting there. So that's how it changed. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that it should continue as is. There needs to be at least uh, a, a part where the, the, the students should practice presenting in person to a client. But uh, we will see if it, it's going to work out that way or not. Absolutely. I, I, have, I have two questions. Yeah. Uh, how how uh, has the um, employment model changed? Uh, yeah. to, to, to the situation times. And of course, later on, you could tell us a little bit about how how is this situation affecting advertising in general? Yeah. Well, what I understand from uh, younger friends uh, who are still uh, practitioners in advertising, the whole uh, mode of work has gone online. Everybody seems to work from home or from wherever they need. And um, I'm told that uh, productivity and efficiency has even gone up, uh, which is a good sign because uh, as you probably know, uh, ad people are, are known procrastinators. They just, it, it just takes too long to come up with a bloody idea. Uh, so, there's also a saying which is, well, we came to work late, so let's go out early. Uh, so this has all changed. I mean, it, it has turned on an even a longer uh, daytime. Mm -hmm. So on the agency side, the efficiency has gone up. On the employment mm -hmm. side, inevitably, I think, uh, I'm hoping that this particular uh, Malady has uh, been instrumental in showing who is really a workhorse, who can work whatever times, and who is just a faker. Mm -hmm. So I assume that the, the uh, those who did not perform uh, have been eliminated or on the process of uh, being eliminated. And whoever is going to be recruited and uh, uh, employed it gives, um, um, this makes me sad to say, but it gives the agency more uh, handle to make young graduates work without money because they don't need to transport to the agency location. They can work online and uh, they can in fact uh, abuse more people uh, online instead of accepting two or three interns, they are now probably in a position to say, okay, you work with us 
to uh, 10, 15 young graduates and so on and so forth. So um, on one side, it's a good thing. On the other, it's another tool for abusing young people. Mm -hmm. So compared to where you start, when you start advertising, um, mm. do, do you feel that advertising creatives still have the freedom to express the great ideas or do they self-censor themselves in a way? Um, now, your question um, just touches a nerve end of mine. I think it has always been the case where if you had a good idea, you didn't need any tools or executional gimmicks to make it make sense. On a single piece of paper, you wrote a couple of lines in by hand or on your awful noisy typewriter, and that was it. If it was good, uh, everything built on it. Mm -hmm. But now, for quite a long time by now, uh, the computers, the apps, and so on and so forth has buried the idea uh, ingredient to somewhere deeper. And you can always get away with a shitty idea if you're good at Photoshop and InDesigns and uh, typography and so on and so forth. The idea was to uh, have the wordsmith work with the visual art person, I'm not calling artist, the art person together to bring something out the way it should be uh, presented at the entry level. But it's gone now. What they do, most of them, of course, uh, go on their bloody computers, search the web, come up with a stock photo, and get their copyrighted partner, if they are partners, to write a silly sentence to it and call it an ad. It, it shouldn't work like that. So when we started, it was harder. Um, it was easier to get into an agency if you had good background, a good, good uh, education, but it was harder to work, to come up with real ideas, slogans, campaigns, uh, ads, etc., etc. Even the art directors had to do a lot of drawing by magic markers, uh, uh, do layout by hand and so on and so forth. That was, that was when it was real. Mm. Now everything is done by proxy. Proxy of web, proxy of uh, computers, uh, visual apps, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. I have a request or, or a message through you. I suggest the art design schools, graphic design schools to forbid use of computers, at least for the first year or even until third term. If, you, if they have an idea, they should be able to put it on a piece of paper with a, with a pencil, God damn it. Yeah. Well, you're actually uh, the, you're going ahead to my next question. Uh, would, would existing, uh, education, uh, existing education structures, uh, are they supporting an ideal version of the agency or do we need a different education structure to, to have the perfect uh, simulation? Um, let me tell you this. If you go on Amazon today and search for knives, they will actually come up with product suggestions that touch um, Syrian steel, or the Japanese knife, and this and that, what the chefs are using, and so forth. <laughs> But if you're a real chef or, or a person who really needs a good knife, it doesn't necessarily have to be all that uh, hullabaloo, so to speak, about how it's made and so on and so forth. I guess it's the same with the education. 
I know you yourself have been a great visionary regarding how the, the, the art and design education should be versus what it has been so far historically. Uh, I think instead of, or at least, along teaching them the history of art, the basic concepts, uh, this and that and blah, 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 the education system should be such that the kids try their hands at everything they have been taught or being taught. Second, they should be uh, of a research mind, not just simply doing the projects, memorizing the textbooks, coming up with uh, cyclopedic knowledge of this and that and whatnot, uh, getting a handle of a video camera, doing some editing, putting out some year-end exhibition piece, going through juries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The testing of the pudding should be in the eating. They should take that simple knife and cut a watermelon to an artistic level of a Thai chef, so to speak, okay? They should not uh, be content with coming up of a 3D model of how, the, how that watermelon should look like or uh, uh, really uh, adorned printouts of a multicolor design that emulates, uh, I don't know which graphic artist uh, before them. They should do something new. And the system should, uh, if I'm allowed to make another uh, similarity, to draw a similarity, you don't simply take a, a little kid and lecture him about how he should be walking. You just put him on the ground, give him a little help, and he learns walking by falling, standing up, holding on to some, something, but he or she walks. That's what the advertising architecture, et cetera, et cetera, need to do. Same thing. Give them the basics, but let them do the tryout themselves. Yes. So you're talking about building a craft, building a, a specific craft. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because if you're not a craftsman to start with, you can't be uh, a teacher or a theoretician about that. You, you, you need to do it. Absolutely. So I understand that you've got uh, some new books coming out uh, recently. Or uh, the most recent uh, I translated is about a, a year ago. Mm. It was uh, it's called. Um, uh, let me just read you the exact title. Yes, it's Ogilvyon uh, Advertising in the Digital Age, uh, written by uh, Maya Zhang, who used to be a CEO of the whole network. Um, a very interesting book because uh, it just supports one hunch that I had. Kids kept coming back up to me and saying, oh, Jam, uh, your teaching or the, the stuff you're trying to teach us uh, are old. It's now online, it's digital, and so on and so forth. I said, look, advertising is basically, as Bill Bernbach said, is a persuasion process. It's a communication uh, procedure. So digital or analog is just a medium. If you don't have the idea, if you don't have the execution, it doesn't matter if everything is digital. It may be uh, making your life easier, but it's not by itself giving you ideas out of the blue, okay? So the book says the same thing. It says, whatever Ogilvy said regarding the basics of advertising still holds today. In fact, 
most of that is being successfully used in digital applications. So Ogilvy uh, still holds universally. I, I love that book. I loved doing it. Uh, and I heard already that uh, two teachers, uh, two uh, advertising teachers, one teaching masters and one teaching uh, PhD are using it as a textbook in Turkish. And uh, that's one uh, I really am proud of. You were going to write something about you uh, as well? You're in the process of writing something about you and... Right, you're jumping the gun, but uh, let this be a promise to uh, whoever is interested in uh, reading Turkish. Well, I'm, I'm uh, still making extensive notes and trying chapters on a novel, a pulp novel, that takes place in the Turkish advertising scene uh, in the past. Oh. Because, because when I had the idea, Uh, everything was different. Yeah. Uh, but I had problems of solving where I would be in the novel. I mean, am, am I just a writer? Is it just pure bullshit fiction? It's, it's a, so I think I came up with a solution to all that, a hybrid solution. I'm not, I'm not going to give away more of it, but uh, it will be easy to read. It's not going to be putting down advertising industry as such because most of uh, old veterans do that. They just come out of advertising and they just sit down in a Starbucks somewhere and write a novel, uh, putting all the blame on advertising institution and advertising agencies and clients and so on and so forth. I'm not going to do that. Uh, I'm going to be touching good sides and the bad sides. Um, pitches, uh, it'll be easy to read. And then uh, I will be getting some stuff off my chest. Brilliant. Are we going to have it in English as well? Um, Turkish has to come out first. Mm, okay, okay, yeah if, yeah. if I like the end product, maybe I'll put my ass down and uh, translate it once for myself. <laughs> How can our viewers and listeners best find you? Pardon? How can our viewers and listeners find you? Ah, um, that's a hard thing because uh, I spent my life in uh, Turkish advertising. So uh, what I need to bring out of my chest is all in Turkish. But um, eventually I'm trying to um, put together a YouTube channel regarding the advertising history in Turkey again. But since it will be public, uh, people, I just want to drop a line. I know you're trying to get me to do something in English. But, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I think what people find you on LinkedIn and on Twitter and on uh, where can they find you? To be honest, uh, LinkedIn, uh, I dropped out. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, With all due respect to the brand, uh, I think it's a cheaper business version of Facebook, which I don't think highly of, although I'm active somewhat. Um, but it's easy if they put my first name and last name uh, and together in lowercase and send it to Gmail. Brilliant. I'll respond on the spot. Brilliant. Brilliant. What advice would you like to leave us with? Um There's been a three-liner, which I wrote uh, in the past, as an advice to one of my brand consultancies. But I also used it in the advertising agency uh, simulation in school. Maybe uh, it would be a good idea to share it with you. Uh, to be successful or to be aware all the time while you work, You need to be three things. One is larger than life. Second, faster than the client and wiser than the competition. Wow. If you do this, 
you will have fun, you will benefit the clients, and you will outrun the competition. You can do it, you can apply it to your uh, studies, even if you're a student. Um, between you and me and the lamppost, the last two sometimes switch words between them, mm -hmm. reading like um, wiser than the client, faster than the competition, but still holds. <laughs> That's my word of advice to you. Thank you. Thank you ever so much for your time. That was fantastic. Uh, fantastic. Thank you. Thank you, Haluk. Thank you, Lefteris.